Let's jump into running back strategy, starting with, of course, the very popular here, Barry, Zero RB. Zero RB has swept the nation, essentially, as you always say, not taking a running back in the first four to five rounds. Give us just a little outline of the pros and cons for those that do opt to go zero RB in their drafts. Yeah, I mean, so we talked about this a little bit last segment, right? But um, the idea of, of, of zero RB is that you're absolutely crushing you're having elite wide receivers, elite tight ends, right? And then the idea is, is that it, it sort of came from best ball. And the idea, the idea there, it, it's not sort of similar to this year, but just in general, the kind of concept is, is that, hey, there are running backs that are going later because they have uncertain playing time situations. They're part of a committee, Khalil Herbert, you know, kind of thing. Uh, or they are, um, you know, they have, a, they have a path to being, you know, a superstar running back. Like Samaj P. Ryan, who behind Joe Mixon or Alexander Madison, who was behind Dalvin Cook in previous years, or you knew if anything happened to the starter in front of them, Tony Pollard behind Ezekiel Elliott, for example. So that, that you can find those guys and that, especially in best ball, ultimately running backs will come into the league. That's the idea behind zero RB. The cons are, of course, is that like that doesn't happen and that the backups you're chasing aren't the ones that end up popping and that, you know, you miss out on the waiver wire or other people, you know, that Dalvin Cook stays healthy all year and so your Alexander Madison doesn't do much or only does something in one game. So those, those are the cons. But like I said, this year more than ever, I think zero RB or a modified zero RB approach which is somewhat called uh, here RB, and we'll talk about that in a second. A modified zero RB approach is a really good one because that the running backs in the four to six range in terms of the round, you know, going from the fourth to sixth round, I think are awesome. Like, and if you have, four. right, as you see here, right, again, like on your screen, these are all guys going in the sixth, seventh, and eighth round, uh, not including Jonathan Taylor, who obviously has moved down quite a bit. But like, James Conner, James Cook, Cam Akers, Dave Montgomery, Rashad White, Isaiah Pacheco, even even Dalvin Cook to an extent. All of those guys that I just mentioned are going to get some of them. Conner, Akers, Cook, Montgomery, White, Pacheco are all going to get 15 or more touches a game. Dalvin might get 12 to 15. We'll see there, right? And then then in the tier five, Khalil Herbert could easily be the guy, could easily get 15 to 17 touches a game. I think Gibson and Robinson both will touch the ball a lot in an offense that I think will be better than people think. Samaj P. Ryan and A.J. Dillon, again, both should have a bigger role than you think. I don't think the Packers are going to be bad, and I do think that offense will be more run heavy than people think. We already talked about Samaj P. Ryan earlier in the show. So I just, there's just so much, um, because of the way the draft is falling this year, I prefer a zero RB approach or a modified zero RB approach because there's much better value in running backs later on. There are elite guys. There are guys in good situations uh, that you can get later as opposed to the wide receivers, which at the elite level dry up quicker. I think as well, just philosophically with zero RB, it plays into the idea that there's more attrition at the running back position. Sure. There's more attrition at that position than any position in U.S. major sports, effectively. And I think on average, your running back misses like two games a year through injury, and that's less for a wide receiver. And I mean, guys slide as well. Like in the last mock that we did, I got Najee Harris in the sixth round. People are gonna, some, in some drafts, people are going to be terrified of Tank Bigsby, and Travis Etienne is going to slide to the fourth or fifth yeah. round. So you can definitely prosper with that approach. Gary, how about yeah. Hero RB? Say you're in a situation where, where you're slotted in the first round, the value is just too good where you're not going to let Christian McCaffrey go by, right. or Austin Eckler go by, and because people did go all in on zero RB, the Hero RB approach, essentially, you're taking one great running back, you would think, really or one and then you're running, waiting, and then you're going to wait it out. Right, to like the fifth or sixth round. Yeah, Same really sort late. of thing, but again, if you have that anchor running back, you're like, you know what, I feel good for my one running back spot. I know Eckler or McCaffrey or even like Bijan towards the end of the first round, like you feel pretty good about where you're at. And so if you have an anchor running back or a hero running back, it's called different things there, then um, uh, then you feel really good. And now all you got to do is get one, uh, one other running back to pop and you feel good about uh, how your starting running backs are. The cons of that are... Uh, is that, you know, you miss out on an elite wide receiver in the first round, and so maybe you have to uh, work a little bit harder at some of the other positions because you're a little bit more vulnerable, if you will, right? You're going to get, if you go if you go here RB or, or anchor RB, you're only going to have at least one, you may have one elite wide receiver, or depending on how the draft, like if you go McCaffrey early on, like your number one wide receiver might be like T. Higgins, which is, well, we like T. Higgins, you know, or Devontae Smith, like if you're, picking second in a 12-team league, and by the time it comes back around you in this into the second, 
you know, and everyone's going wide receiver crazy. You don't feel great about T. Higgins or Devontae Smith as your number one wide receiver. You'd prefer them as your number two. So that's the only thing is that it hurts you slightly at the other positions. Yep, and I would say with all of this approach, like don't necessarily go into your draft just obsessed that, oh, I'm going to do zero RB. Like right. let the draft, how it plays out early, dictate your approach. Like if you want to go zero RB, but then all of a sudden just randomly Christian McCaffrey's available at pick five for you, then you should probably switch up your approach. Again, like again, and this, is gonna, this sounds defensive, but I don't mean it to, but like that was what happened to me in the last mock we right. did. All jokes aside, like I had planned on doing, I've been mostly doing zero RB or, or hero RB this year. And so I wound up with Eckler. I think Eckler went six, fell to me at six. And then on the, sec- on the second round, in the seventh pick of the second round at 2-7, Derrick Henry's still there. And I'm just like, I'm not, I'm not drafting T. Higgins yep. or Devontae Smith and passing up Derrick Henry. So I ended up going running back, running back, because that's just how it fell to me. And so, again, when you're drafting, you don't have to – you're not stuck with that team your entire year. All you're doing is giving yourself foundational building blocks. And you know what? Chances are you'll be able to trade Eckler or Henry if you need to. Or see how some of your sleeper wide receivers, if one of them pops. That's the, you know, that's the idea there um, you know, for me. So I just think it's, that's, that's important to, to understand. And the other, the other last thing I'll say, and this is in my Draft Day Manifesto, which is on NBCSports.com. I'm a company man. But the idea is, is that... You don't need to find running backs that will be a star for every week. Again, like Deion Jackson had two weeks last year where he, he scored over 20 fantasy points, right? There are going to be guys like Latavius Murray, of all things, was a top 20 running back like for six weeks towards the end of the season. Running backs come into the league and, you know, guys that can get you through a couple of weeks here or there because you'll know when to start them because the guy in front of them is hurt for two or weeks and then you can be like, okay, yes, this is, this is the week to start Tank Bigsby because ETN's missing the next two weeks and so... I know Tank Bigsby is going to get 17 touches and be, you know, a top 20 running back this week. The situation you were talking about, Barry, is really heavy RB. Two-plus running backs in the first three to four rounds. And, Jay, we went over, obviously, Eckler and McCaffrey. Those are, and even Bijan to a point. But when you look at tiers two and three, and we'll bring tier two back up in a second, who are the running back targets that you personally are looking at if you are going to go with the heavy RB approach? I mean, if you wind up with one of McCaffrey or Eckler to start, like if I can get Tony Pollard in the second round, I think that's the guy, Uh, certainly. I mean, as the draft unfolded for Matthew, Derek Henry as well. It is interesting where there is that kind of cutoff point where often you are choosing between Pollard and Henry or T. Higgins, Devontae Smith, and I'd rather just have the running back in that situation just because they're the better player and the better prospect. Shouldn't need to chase positions just because you haven't filled it in the second round. Right, and if you take a running back necessarily in the, you know, first round, but then you do catch up on wide receiver in rounds two and three, maybe you do get a Damian Pierce there in a round four range, and he ends up finishing, you know, in that comfortable RB2 range for you as well. Yeah, a a thousand percent. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the, you know, autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotoworld, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.